Schematics are simplified wiring diagrams that display all components, labels, and electrical connections within a circuit. They can range from very simple with just a few components to very complex with thousands of connections displayed across multiple pages. In this video, we will cover a couple of basic schematics and learn how to read them. Here is an example of a simple schematic that powers an LED. The schematic on the left is a simplified version that shows each component as it physically looks, while the version on the right is a traditional schematic with symbols used for the components. A schematic with graphic images, such as the one on the left, is a rare find in the electronics world, so it's best to learn the symbols to have the ability to read traditional schematics. In our previous video, we introduced some of the most common schematic symbols. In this video, we will dive a little deeper and go over some basic schematic concepts and a few more symbols. Let's start by reviewing component polarization. In this schematic, the LED is polarized meaning the component needs to be placed into the circuit in a particular direction. The flat line on the symbol represents the cathode, or negative lead of the LED, which is placed facing the negative battery terminal. Resistors are non-polarized, so they can be placed with either lead facing the positive or negative battery terminals. The lines shown connecting the individual components represent conductive paths, such as PCB traces or physical wires. These lines are called nets. Now let's look at a slightly more complex schematic. The first component I want to point out is the 555 timer. This chip, or IC, has been drawn to look like the physical chip with all of the leads in the correct position. However, this is not typical in a schematic. This style is more commonly found when someone is instructing a novice level maker to provide a schematic that is easier to read and understand. Often, the chip symbol will look similar to one of these examples, where the pin numbers are either not given and need to be verified from a data sheet, or where they are given but are not based on actual physical location on the IC. The IC on the left is not preferred because there are no numbers on the pins, the power pins should be located on the top, the input and other pins on the left, outputs on the right, and ground and negative on the bottom. The example on the right has all of these preferred traits. Looking back at the original schematic, you'll notice a few solid dots where lines meet, and also a few arches. The solid dots indicate a connection between circuit paths, whereas the arches indicate no connection made. Occasionally, you'll see lines that intersect with no arches or dots. This is also to be read as no connection made. Let's go over the various symbols in the schematic. First, there is a non-polarized 0.47 microfarad capacitor, a couple of resistors, a 100 microfarad polarized capacitor, a DC battery source, a speaker, a 555 timer chip, and a photoresistor, which you'll notice has a circle and arrows around a typical resistor symbol. The arrows are pointing inward on this component, unlike an LED, because while an LED puts out light, photoresistors receive light. Now let's go to digikey.com in the Reference Design Library to view a larger, more complex schematic. Symbols on a schematic will have annotations called reference designators. Resistors are annotated as R1, R2, and so on, and may have text indicating their wattage and ohm value. Capacitors may appear as C1, C2, and so on, the IC on the top left has a few components and power connections. Notice the net label or port on the far left that is labeled RAW. This is a net label that indicates a connection to another component with the same net label without showing the net or line path that connects them. This method maintains simplicity and readability by eliminating scores of long paths winding their way around components and through other paths on the schematic. Now that you can identify component schematic symbols and understand how connections are made, you're ready to move on to the next step of breadboarding. Want to watch more videos like this? Like and subscribe.